In this video, we'll be looking at the hit event functionality inside of Unreal C++. By the end of this, you'll see how this component works here. So it is a simple actor component, which can be placed on anything, simply a static mesh, which is checking for hit events in the world. So if we press play, we can see that this is set up on just a collider. So I'm rendering the collider there. There's no static mesh and it is detecting the different objects that it's hitting. So the cube and then the floor and it's printing what it has found the collision against. To get started with this, you can do this in an actor class with the component placed within it. So in the header file, starting from the top, I've included a box component. So I've forward declared the U box component. As I mentioned, we didn't need anything visible here. So it's just something that can receive that hit response from other components or actors in the world. The U box component I've made visible anywhere and placed in a category named components and called this hitbox. And the functionality is very, very simple. We're simply creating a custom function here called onHit, taking in a set signature, which is based on the hit notify function, which we'll be overriding in the code file. So the notify that we're looking at is just here, the on component hit. If you wanted to find out the exact signature, as always, we can just navigate to the declaration of this, find where the on component hit is first being declared. And you can always just copy the signatures from this list here, remembering to take out every other comma. So that's quite simply how I've got the signature here, just in case you needed to find that. And I find that that way is always the most convenient way to find this, just in case anything changes inside of the engine with code revisions or anything. That way, this signature will always be up to date, which sometimes the documentation may not be. So when you have that set up in the header, you've just seen a quick sneak peek here, but uh, very simply, we'll make sure that we have the include for the box component. And inside of the constructor call, all I've done is I've created the hitbox. So using the create default sub object of type ubox component and named this one box. And then as we saw just a moment ago, I've added a dynamic binding to the on component hit function inside of the hitbox. It's taking in two arguments, which is the context actor, which is the actor that this is on, the function to be called on, which will be this, then followed by the function to call, which is the on hit function inside of the A component hit example. Then down below, whenever the binding to the on component hit is called, we're obviously going to call our on hit function. And I'm just using the print string preprocessor directive that I have just above for the print string here and simply printing that we've hit and then passing in the name of the other actor. So like I said, a nice simple functionality. And if you've seen any of my other videos working with things like overlaps or tracing, this is something you're probably very familiar with now, this add dynamic binding, or essentially, like I've said, just pairing this with an existing function. And then whenever that function gets called, we will make use of that and call our own function, taking in all of the same signatures and using these as we need in our checks inside of that function. So back in the editor, just to recap, this looks like this. So we can see here that it's being called every time a hit is being checked against. And like I've said, this is just the simple box component, no static mesh or visual setup here. Just change the line thickness to three, change the size of the box extent so it's nice and easy to see. Added the uh, simulate physics tick here so that this will fall and touch a few different things in the world. And then of course, set the collision presets to block all, making sure that we generate that hit event, which is what we want to check against the hit events, not the overlaps. And of course, setting that to block everything. So we should also be able to run over here and push this around and we can see that it's also detecting the character. So anything that hits this, you're gonna get that response being bound to the default component hit function. So that's it, a nice simple one. Like I mentioned, very similar to the overlap content that I've already covered in this playlist, but people have asked to also see the hit version of the, uh, the bindings there, so very, very similar. And you can always just find it by navigating to the declaration of the function you're wanting to add that dynamic binding to. So hopefully this one's proven useful. As always, if you have enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That's greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any content like this, which is released on a weekly basis to the channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get the updates when they go live. A big thank you to all of the Patreons that you can see scrolling down the screen here. It's the help from the amazing patrons I have on the channel that allow me to keep making the weekly content like this. And as ever, thanks for watching. 
and I will see you all next time.